All right, so in this video, we're gonna cover a Polytimus IRT or using the MERT function. And we're going to walk through a scale called generalized life purpose and see if we can um, get this thing to run. The short answer is not quite. So I've set my working directory, I've imported the file, and the first step always is to recode the data. So if you have any reverse coded items, one, they're probably not gonna work very well because it tends to be problematic, but also we're going to um, fix those so that they're, the A values will at least be in the right direction where low is low and high is high. It's a seven item scale, so what we're gonna do, one at a time, is first let's look at this five. So we've got lots of low values and a couple of high values. So what you can do is take each item and do eight minus and that item number again, and um, use that to reverse it. So I'm gonna do eight minus question five, run this table again, just to check what I did. And so you'll see that it reversed. Don't run this multiple times or it'll flip back and forth. So I'm gonna run eight and 13. So all of our items should be reverse coded now. Um, I'm gonna calculate a generalized partial credit model on the data. Now, I only have 171 uh, observations, and so that's a little low for a, an IRT analysis. I can also take a quick summary to make sure I don't have any crazy NAs, so I'm missing one or two here and there, so maybe it um, isn't a huge deal. Uh, load the MERT library, and I copied this code from what we did in our IRT example in the lecture. So I did my poly model equals MERT. So we'll just run poly model. Data equals master. One factor model item type is generalized partial credit. This is gonna iterate a lot and actually not settle. Um, but what we can do is just use it as an example. So you'll see how it's real close to the bottom here and it can't get quite to the level that it wants to get to. Um, where the change is like very, very small. Um, but it still gives me a solution and I can maybe use that solution to come up with items to delete to um, try this again. So if I look at my summary of this particular model, I can see that question eight is poor. So remember you can treat these like factor coefficients and uh, eight is pretty low and 13 is pretty low and five. So our reverse coded items are already causing a problem here. So I'm gonna include those um, in this summary. So yes, they appear to load on one factor, although I'd probably ditch a couple of the items. If I look at my coefficients, I can see that some of them are very good. So I've got 1.25, 1 1.26, two, five is poor, Eight is poor, you see a theme here. Nine is actually pretty poor, and 13. So we're having problems with our reverse coded items for sure. So we could always try deleting those and um, excluding them from the analysis because they may be, may be poor items. Okay, so which items are good for discrimination? Okay, so I'm gonna include my A values. Um, so it's actually probably a little easier if I tell you which ones were bad. So we said five, eight, nine, and 13 were poor. Okay. Um, we also want to include some graphs here. So we're gonna include those ICCs. So that's item characteristic curve. But in this type of analysis, those are called trace curves. And we're gonna do all of those trace curves. So we're gonna run all 15 of them at once. You can do them one at a time, but in our particular example, we're doing all 15. So I make this plot bigger. You can tell that there's some craziness going on. Look at 13, 13 is kind of a hot mess. We'll blow that one up here in a second. Um, but five is not looking so good either. And some of these other ones are looking kind of poor. Well, you're also gonna include the test information function. So 
So that is here, test information curve, to see where we're measuring best on this purpose and life scale. And it looks to me like we're measuring best at nearly the bottom of the scale. So that's not so good. We'd prefer to measure kind of over the average of the scale, but our theta is hovering around a negative two. They do appear to load on one factor with maybe a couple of exceptions that are poor because maybe they're reverse coded. And then getting um, some, some interesting information about items. But for to do that, what I'm gonna need to do is make the uh, trace curves Oops, no, I'm sorry, the information curves for each item. So this part is a little slow. You have to do it one at a time unless you really want to get into looping data. So for item one, it appears to measure below average. Right? Item two, also below average. Three, catching a theme here. Four, five. So we're looking like this is mostly below average which is why the test information curve, which is the overall for everything, is what it is. Okay, I might, let's try, let's try that, see what it does. Nope, don't like that. Oh, I was on nine. Eight looks like it's kind of average. Nine is way below average. 10 is below average. 11. 12, okay, you get the idea. Now if I look at my coefficients again, I can really see this by looking at where the top items are. And so if um, B3 here or B4 is hovering over average, that would be an item that is measuring in the middle because the middle of the scale is in the middle of the distribution for theta. And maybe 12, so Tesla 12 has this little hump here, but 12 is actually doing much better over here. So these don't perfectly tell you that answer, but it can kind of, it kind of matches. You can also look at their trace curves individually. So item plot, change that to trace. And um, the trace curves sort of indicate that they're not using the entire scale. So three here is never picked. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, oh, um, well this one only went one through six, it looks like, instead of one through seven. So seven's not even used. So that's a problem when they don't use the entire scale. And here there's only one, two, three, four, five, four, five high points. So three, two of the points are not being used. Four, similar problem. Let's look at five. Five, uh, it's kind of a hot mess, but only three or four of them are being used. So that seems to be a common theme. So which me questions measure below average ability? All of them. Which ones appear to measure above average ability? Pretty much none. Maybe sum of 12. Okay. And so I was using those item traces and ICCs for that. I'm not gonna cut and paste each one because that'd be a lot of pictures, but you get the idea. We definitely have some problems with, uh, maybe not ordering. Ordering seems to be okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So they appear in order, like the curves are in order from each other, but we definitely have some problems where they are not, um, they're not all peaking. Okay, and this is where I would say the choices are not all equally probable, are not equally, all most probable at some point. Um, so generally only four to five of the points are likely at some point. Okay. So that indicates that maybe this scale shouldn't be a seven item scale and certainly several questions should be thrown out. So if you'd like, you can try removing those questions and seeing if it would load correctly. Okay, this should be, I want to take this out. Um, 
and we could try that again and just pulling out some of the bad questions. So definitely um, collapsing items is something you have to kind of do manually, but 5, 8, 9, and 13 are poor, so I'm going to drop those. Try this thing again. And it may be the fit may be just as poor. Ooh, see that time with those points excluded, it finished iterating. So that's always a good sign when it finishes. So let's look at a summary. Okay. These all load pretty highly on their individual factor. All of these coefficients are greater than one, which is good. And if I look at my trace curves, and I give it a minute, we're still going to have the same problem. So it's not magically going to solve my problem where items um, are not being all used because that doesn't really change, but it does solve the problem of the iterating and item fit and that sort of thing. But then the next piece I'd probably want to try with this particular scale is collapsing items together. So collapsing maybe three and four together. Um, and see, well, it can kind of look at where the curves uh, overlap the most. Does it overlap with three the most? Does it overlap with five? Uh, if I'm pick taking out four, does it overlap with three the most or five the most? And kind of collapse those together. So that would require me changing everyone's scores in the data set, which requires a little bit of work. Um, but I could try collapsing those items to see if this model fits even better once I make it not a seven point scale, which is clearly not working, into a five point scale, which is what people, it looks like people are actually doing. And so all that's just sort of the quick, dirty polytomous items, um, testing some different points on um, a uh, generalized life purpose scale.